Hey guys, I just want to talk about this really cool mechanism of insulin release. So, basically, after a big meal or after eating anything really, you have um, an increase in blood glucose levels. And the key to detecting this is through uh, something called GLUT2, which is a glucose transporter. And GLUT2, um, as opposed to GLUT1 and 3, your basal glucose um, transporters, this has a, a relatively high KM of about 15 to 20 millimolar, which means it just can turn over large amounts of glucose very quickly, very efficiently. And uh, this is important particularly in the liver and the pancreatic beta cells for detection purposes. So we can detect uh, large increases in glucose very quickly. So we can take glucose from the bloodstream, shuttle it in to your pancreatic beta cells in this case. So we're looking at beta cells. And through glycolysis and citric acid cycle, we can oxidize glucose all the way down to CO2, and as a result, generate ATP. So in a high glucose type of situation, we can really increase our cytosolic levels of ATP in the pancreatic beta cell. And this can be sensed by an ATP sensitive potassium channel. So ATP sensitive potassium channel. So normally this channel is open uh, and it lets potassium out of the cell which hyperpolarizes your cell or makes your membrane potential more negative. Uh, when you get your increase in cytoplasmic ATP we inhibit and shut down this particular channel and by doing so we have uh, changed our membrane potential, we have depolarized it and this can be detected by a voltage gated calcium channel. So, voltage gated calcium channel. So normally uh, this channel is normally closed but once you depolarize the membrane potential enough we can let in calcium and as you might remember calcium is a super important secondary messenger and this increase in uh, cytoplasmic calcium can be detected by a lot of different things but most importantly for this particular mechanism it's going to be detected by proteins on the surface of these vesicles these uh, lipid bilayer basically containers full of insulin inside of the pancreatic beta cells so calcium will bind to these um, calcium sensors on on the surface of these vesicles and that'll tell the vesicle to go bind to the membrane. So it'll actually integrate itself into the lipid bilayer membrane and by doing so we're going to release all of the insulin that was stored inside of this vesicle into your blood. So insulin is now free in your circulatory system to go um, bind to its receptor and for the sc scope of this course we've talked about the receptor on the surface of skeletal muscle and on the surface of adipose tissue, adipose cells. And upon binding these receptors um, through the series of biochemical events we're going to upregulate GLUT4 uh, to basically take in all this excess glucose in your blood uh, to be stored as either fat or to be used for some other means. Now, the reason I find this pathway super interesting is because uh, the way that calcium is sensed on these vesicles and the way the payload inside the vesicles are released into the bloodstream, it's um, pretty much identical to how neuro, uh, neurotransmitters are released in neurons. So you can get an action potential down the axon of a neuron, and you get the same deal with a, a voltage-gated calcium channel opening, binding of calcium to these sensors on the vesicles, and you can dump out neurotransmitters. So I think it's really interesting to have kind of these two 
uh, these parallels between two very different systems. And uh, I hope you guys find this uh, not just helpful, but also interesting in that regard. So good luck studying, and I will see you guys in the next one.